When you were young, did they ever tell you, don't talk about politics or money or some other controversial issue at the dinner table? Why is that? Well, one of the main reasons is it's divisive, which means it causes conflict among the people present, and you don't want a discussion among people who are close to get too heated. We shouldn't let arguments provoke disproportionate responses. But to bar all talk about politics is an act of censorship. It says certain topics are not to be questioned. It assumes the existing hierarchy and the appearance of authority are correct. That includes the hierarchy at home, the authority of the parent. The hierarchy outside the home reinforces the one inside and vice versa. And that's what we're talking about today. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. If you want to help me out financially, check out my substack. That's a pretty decent stack. Picture the scene. The whole family's eating dinner. Someone brings up their money problems. An adult says, no, we don't talk about money at the dinner table. Then someone mentions something on the news that seemed important. And an adult says, oh, we don't talk about politics at the dinner table either. Then a child says something like, how come we live in a small house and my friend over there lives in a big house? Or the other way around, of course. And the child gets a simplistic answer like, well, we just work harder, or we've been blessed. Because how are you supposed to explain how the economy works to a child? Maybe there's an adult who tries to explain it's because of capitalism and inequality and a long history of colonial violence, and another adult says to shut up, because the child doesn't need to know about all that. Have you been there? We learn from adults what we're supposed to say, what we're not supposed to say, when we're not supposed to talk about something, and when we're not supposed to say anything. They're teaching a kind of politeness. Lack of money is shameful. Politics is divisive. Feeling anger or sadness? Suck it up! There is a time and place for so-and-so, they might say, in order to avoid talking about it. But that doesn't quell the child's curiosity. They could go to the library, right? Oh, no, sorry, kids. A parent found a book about gay people, so you're not allowed to go there anymore either. So why is it we're allowed to learn about money and politics and stuff in school and from the news? They talk about it. I think it's because we're not allowed to hear anything that isn't the official truth told in the approved official setting. We grew up accepting everything our parents told us, followed by everything the schools told us, then everything the university and the news says. We listen to people who we're told are experts, authorities on the subject, so you don't have to learn on your own. These things form our worldview, from which we make assumptions about the world and what's right and wrong. We aren't allowed to talk about abortion at the dinner table, so we don't know if we know anyone who's had an abortion, how it affected them, and so on, so we don't have any individual reference for who will get harmed by legally forced birth laws. So we might support those laws without realizing how many people they will hurt and kill. We weren't allowed to talk about drugs at the dinner table, so our parents either lied to us or let the schools lie to us. We weren't allowed to talk about racism at the dinner table, so now we don't know what racism is. Just that there are a few really racist people out there, but we're not like them. We're good people. So we might do racist things without realizing, or without caring, because it's no big deal. Knowledge itself 
has a kind of hierarchy of legitimacy, with scholars and experts and authorities all on the top, and you with your experience way down on the bottom. The state selects the people who lend scholarly authority to the propaganda. They make textbooks full of official history and teach them in schools. Most people are so ground down by school, they just accept it. Stop asking questions, just shut up, write this down, and memorize it for the test. Even just going to Wikipedia, and of course, Wikipedia has its faults that you should take into account, but just to begin to learn the most basic facts on a subject, you can go to Wikipedia on anything you were taught in school and learn all kinds of important things they never told you. But, you know, don't, don't stop at Wikipedia. Before you can think critically about a topic, you probably need to know a lot about it. Like maybe several books worth, or multiple years of studies worth. If you learn enough about a topic, you can see how much garbage you've been told. And just as importantly, you can see through the lies you will get told in the future, too. Either way, now that knowledge is much easier to access, well, it's time to unlearn everything school taught you and learn the things it would never teach. This might be a good time to distinguish between the two types of authority. Authority could just be knowledge, as in the phrase, uh, she's an authority on the blue whale. But she's not going to make laws and forces to follow them. That's the authority of the state the authority to impose its will by violence if it feels like it. The state delegates some of its authority to the corporation, some to the school, and other institutions of social hierarchy, and that's the system we're raised to believe in. This system considers the two types of authority, expertise and force, to be the same thing. At home, at school, in the workplace and in the government, the authority to impose order and mete out punishment is synonymous with being factually and morally correct. They have an official mandate to impose the official truth. If we just had the freedom to learn, we would understand things so much better as adults. If we didn't learn something as kids and we don't try to learn it, outside school, we'll never learn it. We'll say things like, oh, I've, I've never heard anything like that, so sounds fake. If you're not allowed to think there might be something more to the story, you don't question it. In effect, you're not allowed to question it. You're not allowed to question the authority figure at all. Authority told you something as a child, so that's the official truth and it's okay to force people to conform to it. Many parents want their authority to be absolute. Disobey and you're disobedient, rude, disrespectful, badly behaved, or just, just a bad kid. You might even be called a, a sinner for rebelling against a religious order that teaches you to obey your parents because the clergy can't be everywhere, so the parents have to lay down religious law in the home, and in return, the clergy uphold the parents' authority. They instill shame in you right from the beginning. That's why it's sad to me to hear people brag about having learned all their values from their parents, as if that makes them the right values. Seems like what you learned was just not to question authority. You might claim to only obey one authority, your parents. So it's just a coincidence that that authority agrees with the ruling class on everything that matters. It's okay to distance yourself from your parents' beliefs and values. They might have been shit. Let's talk about propaganda. As I explained in this video, propaganda is not just messaging or political speech you disagree with, but a, a complete picture of how the world is that's created for us by the ruling class. 
All ruling classes create propaganda to legitimize their rule and authority, and thereby the authority of all their agents. And all propaganda reinforces hierarchy. What does this have to do with what you can and can't say at the dinner table? Well, propaganda is as much in what we don't talk about as what we do. Children raised in a home to listen to authority without question spread propaganda as if it were truth and reinforce norms of violence will do so. Kids will not save us if they learn the same bullshit we did. Censorship at the dinner table leads to accepting authority in everything it teaches. It's not always intentional or conscious. I doubt parents at the dinner table are thinking, I'm purposefully silencing my child in order to uphold an empire of capitalism and white supremacy. They're probably not even thinking they're upholding their own position, though that is also the effect. They want civility, peace and quiet, everyone getting along, or as authority calls it, order. And they'll impose it by force if there are dissenters. In short, they replicate the social order that's imposed on the rest of us by the ruling class. We're all coerced into a certain kind of life, and the easiest way to live is just to accept the coercion and live the life planned for you. You're encouraged to make as much money as you can because it's the only thing you can legally do to make your life easier. Before climate change threatened to destroy our civilization and make money worthless, that might have worked. You might have been able to weather the coming storm. Now we'd benefit a bit more from learning things like how to grow food, how to find water, and how to work in teams. If you really care about your kids' education, pull them out of school and let them discover the world, as I explain in this video. But parents and schools aren't willing to let kids learn the things they'll need, or just what they want, because they're still believing, hopefully, in a future that looks like the past. And they will force children to believe in it, too. Parents will police your appearance. You're not allowed to wear that. You're not allowed to cut your hair the way you want. You're not allowed to put on makeup. You're a boy and have to act like other boys. That's why so-called conversion therapy, which falsely claims you can turn a gay person straight or a trans person cis, has been so popular with parents, and is only now finally being banned. They're terrified their child might be different, as if different meant defective. Any differences can get punished and shamed. It's not surprising so many conservative parents back laws of the don't say gay or trans variety that, in effect, don't let kids be different. They think you can punish and beat kids until they turn out precisely as the parents want. The excuse is always taking care of the kids and doing what's right for them. The problem is, what they say is best for their kids is just whatever they, the parents, decide. They might take away their kids' autonomy and ignore their needs, but that's because obedience is more important than freedom. They learn the excuse from the state, which does the same thing, regarding us as its children who can't be trusted to decide things for ourselves. The state takes our, away our freedom for our own good. Parents and schools teach obedience to authority so they can be properly adjusted to society. One lover abuses another because, because he cares about her. Of course, none of this is exclusive to the dinner table. That's just a metonym. They don't want kids asking questions between meals, either. Did you ask your parents why that person was living in the street, begging for money, talking to themselves, maybe disabled and in pain? You did at first, right? But then you were told to ignore them. We get given simplistic, sweeping explanations like, well, they just don't want to work, you see. Or, they could get help if they really wanted. What do we learn from it? To ignore the people suffering the most. They are a social problem that charity or the state will, the state will solve for us. Besides some 
There's always been poverty, so there's nothing we can do. Just keep your head down and make money. Why do so many parents become tyrants? Well, parents are encouraged to consider themselves the authorities. And like the state and the school, they blend the two meanings of authority to think they're right, therefore what they do is right. They think they have to be this flawless repository of knowledge that can't admit weakness. Why? After a few years of bossing kids around, they act like they are right about every topic under the sun. That's why, even when you're older, they think they should advise you on everything, regardless of how little they understand you or the world. There are people in their 30s and or even 40s watching this video who are successful and satisfied with where they are in life, whose parents are still asking them things like, are you sure you don't want to be a doctor? When their kids are young, the parents grant themselves total control over the lives of their children. This includes parents who think they believe in freedom. Like this one. The Trevor Project is for queer kids facing the huge amount of bigotry that queer kids face, including from their own parents, to talk to an adult who understands. Kids need a place to be able to talk to someone else. What if their parents are abusing them? At least one set of parents has abused their children to death because they might be gay. So should parents be allowed the unlimited right to do anything they want to their kids? No. But kids shouldn't be allowed to keep anything from their parents, no matter what their parents do to them. What these moms for liberty mean is they believe in a few specific liberties that only apply to other adults. How come when it's adults, it's the spousal abuse hotline, and when it's kids, it's keeping secrets from their parents? IRL Donut gets it. Maybe ask yourself why your kids want to hide things from you, rather than blaming other people. To quote from Tumblr, I hate it when parents are like, I know you better than you know yourself. Like, no, you don't. Like, oh, you're an expert on the inner machinations of my psyche? Name three of my top ten existential dreads. But I raised you, yeah, and the only version of me that you know is the one I carefully crafted so that you wouldn't ask me questions because it became obvious early on you couldn't handle the honest answers. And there are millions of adults who are just fine with abuse because it's the parents doing it. You might not call it abuse, but all studies on the long-term effects of violence on children show that Spanking is equivalent to abuse, and it has terrible long-term effects. If you say, my parents beat me and I turned out fine, you probably didn't turn out fine, actually. You just don't know why you have anxiety or violent mood swings. And if you think parents should beat children for disobeying them, you definitely did not turn out fine. Uh, the zombie traditions of dead generations continue to infect the brains of the living. People like this think parents are supposed to mold and correct their incomplete children. Not teach them, but force them. They aren't supposed to learn to think or sympathize. They just learn to obey or face punishment. They grow up to believe everything authority tells them without a fight. They might become soldiers, or cops, or bureaucrats, or teachers, or bosses, so they can be the authority, while still serving authority. They'll get tricked into believing their thinking for themselves, but they'll believe all the basics that are required of them, and the social structure can remain in place. 
Fortunately, there are also people determined to break the cycle of abuse and try to prevent it happening to anyone else. But sometimes they get arrested trying. Recently, after the Supreme Court deliberately by accident let slip they were planning on destroying the last vestige of freedom to get an abortion in the U.S., people naturally wanted to protest. They tried to go to the Supreme Court, but there were these huge fences erected all around it, you know, just that day. So they showed up at the home of one of the judges. The next day, all the civility press with its civility discourse were saying, hey, whoa, 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 protest the guy if you want, but why are you demonstrating outside his house during dinner when his kids have to witness it? Somebody think of the children. <laughs> First of all, what is it about this time of day? Second of all, maybe a judge's kids should know what a piece of shit their father is. Should they really believe their parents are perfect and right when they wield this kind of power? But dinner time is this sacred time for you and your family that no truth is allowed to penetrate. But none of this matters, because all calls for civility in politics are calls for people to shut up. That's it. They're saying, sure, you might die for reasons we could prevent if we just signed our names, but be polite about it. That's how power works, in politics and at the table. They don't have to listen to you. They don't have to take your views into account. They don't mind, well, parents might, but people in power don't mind having a million deaths on their hands. As, as we've seen, politics has nothing to do with civility. Politics is deciding who gets to impose whose will on everyone. That's what the police are for, for when the people who are the objects of policy resist its implementation. There's no room for civility in politics because politics is violence, and its victims shouldn't have to be civil to be heard. Let me read a thread by Ryan Ken. Politeness is valuable in a repressive, violent society. It contorts reality so telling the truth is rude, not the right time, or a breach of protocol. You yell down the street to tell your neighbor someone set their house on fire, but you get in trouble because yelling is rude. Some of the cruelest people don't curse. Exploitative jobs require constant performance of enthusiasm and pleasantries. Many of the anti-choice folks think using words like vagina and uterus is crass. Often an insistence on politeness is about reminding you who makes the rules. I don't know the motivations of the leaker, but it's wild to see a breach of protocol is more severe than disenfranchisement on this scale. Protesting outside a person's house, or, say, chalking the sidewalk near it, these are the civil options. A protest is not a chance to say you disagree in a civil environment. They know you disagree. They know they're hurting people. A protest should be a threat, a demand. And if the threat isn't taken seriously and the demands aren't met, what are you going to do to secure your freedom? If shit keeps getting worse, there are much less civil things people could do. The day after a woman was terrorized by chalk on the sidewalk, the Senate voted 100 to 0 to expand security for judges' homes. They're telling the world their safety matters because they work for the state, but the safety of millions of people who might get pregnant doesn't. They're saying those people should be punished for having sex. Their children should be punished with a life of misery. And in 10 years, we'll legalize child labor again. Well, if we haven't been overthrown by them. So we graduate from the dictatorship at home to the dictatorship outside. 
We carry the same values and myths we always have. We can remain the civil, orderly, law-abiding, unquestioning drones our parents, teachers, bosses, and rulers want us to be. Or we can choose not to. All right, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching. Here are a few of the videos I wanted to make, but just realized would take too long.